The Democrat Party is desperate to beat Donald Trump. So far, they've raided his home, arrested him, put him on trial, and still he is the leading candidate for president in 2024. Given everything they have tried so far, is it possible that the Democrats can simply remove Trump's name from the ballot? Well, there's been a court case going on this week to decide just that. We're going to cover all the details this week on Wolves and Finance. A lot of people do not realize that there are a lot of court cases going on right now in the US to determine whether to take Donald Trump off the ballot. Here's a map showing all the states containing court cases against Donald Trump. 28 states have cases. That's more than half of the states. Now, as you can see, some of them have already been dismissed. The red states were dismissed by the judge, the blue states were dismissed by the plaintiff, and the yellow states on this map are still pending. It is expected that most of these cases will be decided in the next few months in order to leave enough time to print the ballots. All these cases are claiming that Donald Trump is an insurrectionist and is not eligible to run for political office. This is based off Section 3 of the 14th Amendment of the Constitution. This was an amendment that was added after the Civil War. The South had lost the war, and as a result, people involved in the Confederacy could not hold public office. That makes sense, because if you just fought a war, you would want the people in leadership to be supporters of the side that won. But applying this Civil War law to today is problematic on a number of levels. It is unclear if this law actually pertains to the president. It refers specifically to members of Congress and the Senate, but does not mention the office of the president. It is unclear if the January 6th protests were actually an insurrection. Did the protests on January 6th rise to the same level as the Civil War? It is unclear if Donald Trump was actually involved in the January 6th protests. Donald Trump did not storm the Capitol. Does a president have to actually be actively involved in the insurrection to be disqualified? These are some massive holes in trying to apply the 14th Amendment to Donald Trump. But all these court cases argue that the law does cover Donald Trump's situation and that he should be removed from the ballot. If you look at these cases, you will notice that most of them are brought by one man, John Castro. In case you don't know who this is, this man is running for president in the Republican Party. I've never heard of this person before. He is claiming that since he is a legitimate candidate, Trump is unfairly impacting his chances of winning by running when Trump is ineligible. This seems highly suspect to me. Is this guy a Democrat plant? First of all, whether Trump was running or not, this guy doesn't stand a chance to win the presidency. No one knows who he is. Second, how is he paying for all these lawsuits around the country? Who is donating to his campaign when he has no reasonable way to win? It seems likely that it's not Republicans, but Democrats that are funding him, which would make his lawsuit illegitimate and a political ploy. Last month, the Supreme Court refused to hear Castro's case. Just this week, the case that Castro filed in New Hampshire was also dismissed by the judge. The judge said, Castro has not established that he has or will suffer a political competitive injury arising from Trump's participation in the New Hampshire Republican presidential primary. The judge is saying here that Castro does not have standing to bring a case because there's no way that he can win. You know it's bad when the judge is telling you that you don't have a chance. The judge also said that even if Castro had standing to bring the case, he would probably rule against him anyway. So things are not going well for Mr. Castro. There are a few cases that are not being brought by Mr. Castro. One of the more shocking ones started last Monday in Colorado. Six voters in Denver, Colorado are suing to remove Trump from the ballot because they claim he's an insurrectionist. 
just so you understand the context, Denver is a very liberal district. 80% of people voted Democrat in the last presidential election. These six people are saying that they want to take away the rights of everyone else in Colorado to vote for Trump so that they don't have to see his name on the ballot. Who else is involved in this case? The judge is named Sarah B. Wallace. It turns out that the judge made a $100 political contribution to a group called the Colorado Turnout Project. When you go to their website, it says, the Colorado Turnout Project aims to prevent violent insurrections. Fighting insurrection candidates is one of the central missions of this group. As this is Colorado, it singles out Colorado Representative Lauren Boebert. Lauren Boebert is a Republican member of the Freedom Caucus. They claim on the site that she encouraged the violence, even though she had nothing to do with the protests on January 6. This group is who this judge supports with her money. Trump's lawyers asked the judge to recuse herself because of this donation. She denied the request. She said, I do not dispute that on October 15th, 2022, prior to taking the bench, I apparently made a $100 contribution to the Colorado Turnout Project. That being said, prior to yesterday, I was not cognizant of this organization or its mission. I can assure all of the litigants that prior to the start of this litigation and to this day, I have formed no opinion whether the events of January 6 constituted an insurrection. So there you go. She does not remember making this donation and she has no opinion whatsoever about the insurrection. Right. Here's the problem. That donation was only a year ago. How many political contributions do you make that you don't remember who you gave money to? Now, the people who are against Trump argued that the timeline allows for the judge to make these donations. This judge was appointed in August 2022. She donated the money in October 2022, and she did not start work until three months later in January 2023. They argue that even though she knew she was going to be a judge, she was not technically a judge yet. So this was a loophole where she could still donate to Democrats and not impact her impartiality as a judge. Are you buying this argument? Because I'm not. Whether she remembers or not, the code of judicial conduct directs recusal when the judge's impartiality might reasonably be questioned. Now, what do you think? If this judge is giving money to an organization who is fighting against insurrection, do you think she can be impartial over deciding whether this situation is an insurrection? Before you answer that question, hold on. It gets worse. It turns out that she has previously given hundreds of dollars of contributions to all Democrat candidates, including the Secretary of State, Jenna Griswold. Just so you understand, the Secretary of State is the person responsible for running the elections in Colorado and is named as a party in this lawsuit against Trump. So this judge directly gave money to the person involved in this lawsuit. How can she possibly be impartial? As the case has been going on this week, Jenna Griswold has been giving statements to the press standing outside the courthouse. She said, We've never had this type of situation occur where a sitting president incites the insurrection and then has the audacity to run again. So there are real questions about whether Section 3 of the 14th Amendment disqualifies him. From this statement, I think it's pretty obvious where the Secretary of State stands on this case. So you have the Secretary of State outside the courtroom speaking to the press, and you have the judge inside the courtroom giving money to the Secretary of State. It seems to me like this is a setup. Think of this from a personal level. This judge is in Denver County, which is 80% Democrat, and she has the opportunity to single-handedly take Donald Trump out of the election. If she rules against Trump, 
She's going to be a hero in her community. If she rules for Trump, everyone will hate her. She must be receiving tremendous pressure from her friends and family. In fact, if she does not rule against Trump, she's probably throwing away her own career in Denver. She might even have to move somewhere else. Now, as a judge, she should not be taking these things into consideration. She must remain impartial. But let's be realistic. She's going to be feeling pressure from all these politicians that she previously gave money to. Now, let's go back to the Code of Judicial Conduct. It directs recusal when a judge's impartiality might reasonably be questioned. Now, I will ask you again, do you think that this judge can be impartial? Leave your comments down below. Let's take a quick look at the facts in this case. There were protests at the Capitol on January 6. Trump gave a speech before the protest where he said, I know that everyone here will soon be marching over to the Capitol building to peacefully and patriotically make your voices heard. Trump tweeted, Please support our Capitol Police and law enforcement. They are truly on the side of our country. Stay peaceful. Then Trump tweeted, I am asking for everyone at the U.S. Capitol to remain peaceful. No violence! Exclamation point. Remember, we are the party of law and order. Respect the law and our great men and women in blue. Thank you. Those are the facts in the case. Where in the world are these people going to argue that Trump had anything to do with inciting violence when he explicitly told the crowd to stay peaceful? Here is how they argued their case against Trump. They called a man to the witness stand named Peter Simi. He is a sociology professor at Chapman University, and he calls himself an expert in right-wing extremism. This guy makes a career studying supposed political violence by Republicans. I didn't even know that was a thing. So what did this guy say? He studied the events of January 6, and in his opinion, all of Trump's statements about remaining peaceful were actually secret coded messages to instigate violence. Trump actually meant the exact opposite of what he said. He had developed this secret code that the crowd understood was direct orders to attack the Capitol, while at the same time providing Trump with plausible deniability so that he could claim he was telling people to stay peaceful. Now, I'm sorry, but this sounds like some nonsense to me. Absolute nonsense. They are arguing in court that what you actually say does not matter because your words actually mean whatever they want it to mean. I feel like this has to be some kind of prank. It has to be. I keep waiting for this judge to take off a mask, and it turns out it was Dave Chappelle this whole time. And we'd all go, very funny, Dave, you got us this time. Because if this is not all some kind of joke, I'm about to lose it. Halfway through the week, Trump's lawyers filed for the judge to dismiss the case on its merits. They were saying, come on, judge, the plaintiffs have not proven their case. This is ridiculous. Can we please stop this and I'll go home? The judge rejected their request for a directed verdict and said there were important issues that she needed to rule on in this case. She specifically mentioned First Amendment issues. She is saying that since the 14th Amendment bans insurrection, this is in conflict with the First Amendment that grants freedom of speech. So she intends to determine whether the 14th Amendment takes away your First Amendment right to protest against the government. She wants to rule on the question that if you say things critical of the government, does that mean you are trying to create an insurrection and therefore should be banned for running for president? So not only is she going to decide whether Trump can be on the ballot, she is single-handedly going to decide whether to destroy your freedom of speech. This is the Democrats' dream. 
anyone who speaks out against the Democrats can be labeled as an insurrectionist because of their speech. And then they can be kept off the ballot. If this happens, only Democrats will be able to run for office. How is that fair? And how can a judge even decide this? If you think I'm exaggerating, this is the judge in her own words. Listen carefully. These words should send a shiver down the spine of every American. She is talking about how she is going to redefine freedom of speech. However, even if it was appropriate, I would deny because the motion brings up significant legal issues, many of which have never been decided by any court. For instance, essentially one of Pres President Trump's arguments is that the First Amendment displaces the 14th Amendment, or at the very least, the court needs to interpret the 14th Amendment with a First Amendment overlay. The petitioners argue that I should apply the 14th Amendment on its face and that it is not subject to or somehow a lesser amendment than the First Amendment. There's clearly a conflict. On the one hand, you have people in the 1800s being disqualified for writing a letter to the editor. Clearly speech. On the other hand, you have a body of law holding the standards for finding incitement are very high, and the speech needs to be very specific. The court is not prepared today to, con to reconcile those two bodies of law. Similarly, on the one hand, Intervenor Trump argues the court cannot look at statements that are in a glacial pace to find incitement. However, the petitioners argue that I can look at those statements for context and to infer intent and a plan for incitement they contend was caused by the January 6th speech. Trump argues that the January 6th speech does not meet the standard of incitement, but then I have Professor Simi stating that based on the relationship that was built, the words were coded. Petitioners argue in inciting cases that the courts will look at the coded language when determining incite incitement. Now, as this judge decides whether to take away your rights, I think we have to keep a couple of things in mind. Trump has already won an impeachment hearing about this very issue. One week before he left office, Congress started impeachment proceedings claiming he was guilty of insurrection. In a bizarre series of events, the Senate held an impeachment hearing after Trump had already left office. The result of the hearing was that Trump was determined to be not guilty of insurrection. So it has already been ruled that Trump did not commit insurrection. Trump is also currently fighting two questionable lawsuits about the January 6 protests. Special Prosecutor Jack Smith is charging Trump with obstructing an official proceeding. Fannie Willis, the district attorney of Fulton County, Georgia, is charging Trump with racketeering under the RICO statute. But wait a minute. None of these cases are actually charging Trump with insurrection. So this judge in Colorado is trying to determine if Trump is guilty of insurrection when the other cases against him are not even prosecuting him for insurrection. For some additional context, let's look at a similar incident that is going on at the same time. Democrat Representative Jamal Bowman was charged last week with pulling a fire alarm in a House office building when there was no emergency. He is receiving a plea deal where the misdemeanor charge will be completely dropped if he pays a $1,000 fine and writes a letter of apology. What? He pulled this alarm right before the Congress was scheduled to vote on a funding bill he strongly opposed. People are accusing him of pulling the alarm to stop the vote. That sounds like obstructing an official proceeding. He claims it was an accident and that he was just trying to open the door. He said he was attempting to exit the building when he pushed on a door and pulled the lever next to it, which must have been the alarm. You know what I think? I think he's a liar. This is a grown man 
Do you honestly believe that he does not know what a fire alarm looks like? Now let us compare this to the protests on January 6. Here is a video of a person known as the QAnon Shaman. He is being led through the Capitol building by police officers. He was sentenced to almost three and a half years in prison for the charge of obstructing an official proceeding. But if you look at the video footage, it doesn't look like he's obstructing anything. The police are actually opening the doors for him. Okay, so let me see if I understand this. A Democrat congressman pulled a fire alarm to obstruct an official proceeding and nothing happens to him. A Republican protests an election by peacefully walking through the Capitol building, escorted by police, and he is thrown in prison for years. This is why people are claiming there is a two-tiered system of justice in America. In either case, neither person committed insurrection. How is it possible that this judge is considering throwing Trump off the ballot for insurrection? In summary, most Americans believe that we should choose our leaders by voting. We should have free and fair elections with no cheating. So the idea that six voters and a liberal judge in a heavily Democrat county can take away the right to vote of everyone in the entire state of Colorado seems pretty unfair. If this judge is going to remove Trump from the ballot, it had better be based on the most rock solid case I have ever seen. And I think I have shown from the evidence that it's not. In fact, it's one of the weakest cases I have ever seen. Now, we have yet to see how this judge is going to decide. But if she decides anything but complete victory for Donald Trump, it seems an awful lot like corruption. Now, I want to ask you if you can please share this video. I don't think that a lot of people even know that this is going on. So we need to spread the word. If you have Twitter, Facebook, Truth Social, or Getter, just post the link to this video. It helps a lot. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on future videos. Now for a quick channel update, my last video got demonetized again. Now, this is getting ridiculous. I think YouTube is slowly trying to kill my channel. If you go back and you look at all my last few videos on my channel, it's just me coming up here and telling you the facts. So I don't know why all these videos keep getting demonetized. Anyway, if you find my videos helpful, please consider subscribing to a membership to help support the channel. You can sign up for $6 a month on my website, wolvesandfinance.com. Your support makes it possible for me to keep producing these videos. I'm Zach from Wolves and Finance. Thank you for watching.